Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. We got to talk about the weekend because we've got a pretty large storm system heading our way primarily on Sunday and there's been a lot of hubbub online already about potential severe weather, not severe weather. I'm going to talk about some of the things out there. I do think it's going to be a significant storm, but I'm not sold on a severe weather threat yet, so I would not get caught up in that just yet. I'm going to explain why in today's vlog. So let's get right to it. We have nothing happening right now. Today was a really cold start, temperatures in the 20s. We'll be back in the 50s this afternoon, but what I'm watching is this piece of energy out in the west. This is actually part of an atmospheric river which is flooding the Pacific Northwest. This is gonna move out into the plains, and we're gonna see a rather large storm system track something like this. Now, the track is key. The whole storm is heading east, but the energy, the low pressure center, is going to dive south and then kind of move to the northeast and that might actually help out um, the Carolinas with the potential for severe weather but it's going to have a lot of rain with it which is good news uh, but it's going to come in short order and it's going to have a lot of wind energy with it which is why there is a little bit of a severe weather risk with it but it's not super high and I'll explain why here but first let's take off the satellite data here and I'm going to turn on the severe weather outlook we'll turn off everything actually um, to just show you what's happening so let's look at that severe weather outlook we'll look at day one here um, obviously not going much going on so we'll look at friday you see that severe weather outlook right there in the middle of the country so this is where tomorrow at this time we'll see low pressure forming right there we'll go to day three which obviously is going into saturday so to our west on saturday you could see we're going to have a low to medium risk of severe weather so naturally obviously if the storm's heading our way people think well this is going to shift here right well, the energy is going to be going up in this direction and because of that that's likely going to help produce less of a severe weather risk and because of the way the winds are set up it's probably going to be less of a risk as well so i'll explain that as we get into this but let's go to day four which is you know going out a little bit future uh, into the future it's a little too low for the spc to put out an outlook right now but if i were you know putting it out i might put it more to our south and that's kind of where i think we'll see the severe weather risk so technically we're not in the severe weather risk yet but what's interesting is we are in the excessive rainfall outlook so let's look at the excessive rainfall outlook for tomorrow um you could see just to our west i guess no this is saturday excuse me so this will be saturday um you see that's uh basically uh, excessive rainfall outlook let's go into sunday um and we could see going out sunday a little bit further that most of our area is going to be in the higher or lower risk for um flash flooding so i don't want to say higher risk but it's higher for us because we haven't seen rain in forever so believe it or not we're actually in a little bit of a flash flood risk because of how heavy this rain is going to be so let's get into the details of the forecast and it all starts with the future cast all right let's dive right into the future cast here so we're going to look out into the future here we'll go through today and we'll get into tomorrow and we'll stop this tomorrow morning it looks like about 7 a.m so you're starting to see the low pressure come out and look at the inflow of moisture coming in from the gulf of mexico so starting to see kind of the makings of this system our low pressure is starting to form right there we're getting strong southerly flow coming out of the gulf of mexico um, this is really starting to set the stage for what is going to be a pretty potent little system so we'll go through time here and you can see the low pressure really cranking up here in the middle of the country secondary low starts coming out of the rockies and this is really what drives a lot of the action as we get closer to the weekend so this is waking up basically on saturday morning we've got showers to the west 7 a.m saturday morning um, we've got uh, some showers forming and the severe weather risk on saturday notice is going to be right in this area so that's the area we'll be watching and as it pushes east it's going to get more active so at 7 a.m. on Saturday, we have that. But look what happens as we go into Saturday evening. You see the line of storms kind of forming back to the west. This is 1 a.m. Sunday morning. We get into Sunday at sunrise. That's a pretty nasty line of showers, maybe some embedded thunderstorms pushing off to the east. We get into the middle of the day on Sunday, and you can see how things are going to get really active over the Carolinas. What's happening here is we've got really strong southerly winds going up the entire front and so this is going to interact with the mountains and we're going to see heavy heavy rain the thing that helps us without severe weather is the fact that these winds are all pretty much the same direction we're not seeing a dramatic change in wind direction because the energy up here is where we're seeing the wraparound so you can actually see some snow forming right there we'll go into saturday or sunday afternoon four o'clock looks like some of the worst weather starts to move in and again the front looks to be right there that is the line moving through 7 p.m still some heavy rain cold air starts spilling in the backside and you start to see it change over to snow 
and then we go into Monday morning, and by this time, the winds are howling out of the northwest, and we're seeing colder air movement, and the front pushes off to the east. So it really is about Sunday afternoon, and again, a lot of wind energy with this system because we're going to see strong southerly winds and then immediately coming out of the northwest. So an abrupt change in the winds, but that southerly flow interacting with the mountains is likely going to drive some really heavy rain. Um, and the severe weather risk is, is not zero, but I don't think it's as high as many people think. I think because we don't get a lot of the instability, the fuel, I think it stays down here. It doesn't get up into this region. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Um, this map is going to be a little confusing to some people who aren't used to looking at it. But what you need to know you're looking at, you're looking at two parameters here. Surface base cape is what we call thunderstorm fuel. And I'm going to show you as we go into the weekend, not a lot of it comes up here. See like the shades of gray? That's not a whole lot. The scales at the bottom, we, we'd want to see like blues and yellows and oranges. And then these things that you see on the map are called hodographs. Now, they're kind of showing me, and meteorologists know what they're looking at here. This kind of shows you the wind shear with height. And when we see the shape of the hodograph look like a sickle, and when I mean by a sickle, you know, if you've ever seen like cutting corn or hay, those big sickles that people use in that manual way, when they have that sickle shape, that's a little bit of a, of that, a sign of some really strong wind shear. And you can see down in South Carolina, they're more sickle shaped, but as you go north, there's some kinks in it. And then to the west, they're all long and straight. That's a sign of really strong straight line winds. Um, so... The fact that we have a little bit of that wind or have that wind shear showing up is definitely problematic. But the thing is, it's not overlapping with thunderstorm fuel. If I saw these sickle shaped, you know, hodographs and then we saw like two, three thousand surface based cape, we'd be concerned. But the cape down here, you could see the number is like 100, 200, even less than that as you get into the Carolinas. So it, that's the thing. That's the ingredient we don't have. Now, briefly there, you see it kind of upticks a little bit in eastern North Carolina. I'll pause it right there. Let's go right there. Let me back that up. So right here, this is kind of interesting. There is a little uptick right here. So it's a risk. That's why I say it's not a zero risk, but it's not this overwhelming risk that I think a lot of people think it is right now because of the setup of this storm system. Now, things could change, and it's certainly something we have to watch, but right now I would not say so. Now, as far as rainfall is concerned, this is actually a good thing and a bad thing. Um, we're going to get a ton of rain in the mountains because of this northwest or the south, southeast flow. I almost said northwest because it's very similar. Uh, but unlike northwest flow, which affects the Tennessee line, this affects all the mountains that face southeast. So that warm, humid air hitting that mountain is going to lift it and create some heavy rain. So a lot of this, this is a seven-day rainfall forecast, but honestly, it all falls on Sunday. So we'll go uh, through Saturday. We get into Sunday morning, and then by Monday, you can see all of that basically falls right there. So... The, the problem is that's a lot of rain in a short period of time. So even though this is a seven-day rainfall, fact, I could stop it at four days and kind of show you that all this is going to fall on Sunday into Monday, which means two to four inches of rain in the mountains with one to maybe two inches across the Piedmont. And the fact that it falls in such a short period of time is the problem. So, you know, in conclusion, basically, we've got a lot to watch on Sunday. Right now, the severe weather risk is not huge. It's not zero. It's something I'm monitoring very closely. But think of strong winds, straight-line winds, from the south and then the northwest so it's going to be a windy raw day sunday into monday and then heavy heavy rain with that front pushing through on sunday afternoon of course it's only thursday we've got time to update this over the next couple of days